I've questioned the hermit about the horses, and as I'd hoped, he's innocent. He told me that a suspicious stranger showed up and made a rather forceful trade for his valuables. According to him, we're looking for a brown-eyed man in his mid-twenties. He had a black goatee, and while he was clothed like a hunter, he carried himself like something much more shady. No, I have a hard time believing the tenant lied to us to cover up his own crime. Well, for one thing, those tiny feet of his are definitely smaller than a size 12. His ticked-off mood when recounting the story and visible lack of valuables in the house also matches what he said. Plus, just like you'd expect from a hermit, he doesn't strike me as the type to ever leave his little farm. To be honest, I feel bad for the guy. And I don't feel right just taking the horses from him. Not after he was forced into paying everything he had for them. I made him a deal. In exchange for one of the horses, getting to stay the night and breakfast, we'd give him what's left of our money and help him with the chores that are most difficult given his disability. No, real money. We're not giving him the fool's gold we found. He doesn't deserve to be tricked like that. Anyway, telling him I'd also apprehend the scoundrel if I ever saw him also went a long way. Told me to give the butt-chinned short stack what for. Yeah, butt-chinned short stack, that's what I said. Winnie? Are you alright? What do you mean it's him? Who's him? Do you mean to tell me you have some idea who this guy is? The younger of the two backstabbers who got you locked up in that heist for the gemstones? I see. Okay, it's not as though I doubt your memory, or that I don't care about you getting justice. But I have my doubts, Winnie. A few things just don't add up. From what you told me, those two sounded power-hungry and interested in money. What would someone like that be doing in the middle of nowhere, extorting hermits for horse money. I have no doubt that there are more lucrative crimes that could be pulled. It doesn't seem to fit their ambition. And didn't they work as a team? There's been no mention of an older man. Look, let's calmly recap everything we know. We need to make sure that every detail we've heard is consistent with your memory of this person. Maybe I'll even remember some extra small detail that the hermit mentioned. He was a short, mid-twenties male, with a cleft chin, brown eyes, black hair, a goatee, and it sounds as though they're a criminal currently disguised as a woodsman. Oh, and a shoe size of twelve, we learned that earlier. Okay, yeah, it's not like a person's shoe size is something you notice easily. But the rest is consistent, is it? Also, you did factor for the time you were in the cell, right? He would still be in his twenties? Alright, alright, I just wanted to be sure. Just checking, okay? Wait, wait, I just remembered one more thing. The hermit said something about wanting to punch the guy right in his big fat lips. Really? That's all it took for you to give up on the idea? Okay, by the way you're talking about that guy who betrayed you, he must have had, like, the thinnest lips of all time. Uh, I think circus attraction would be taking it a bit far, Winnie. No matter how thin they were, I doubt people would really pay to see that. Anyway, I don't think our chances of catching this horse thief were great to begin with. I didn't even promise that much to the hermit. 
I think he was just happy someone from law enforcement knew about it. Anyway, let's get inside. I think I can already feel the rain starting. No, the hermit sleeps up in his little attic. You probably won't get to meet him. No, a deal's a deal. I forgot to mention dinner, so I guess we're eating some rations tonight. Just be glad we're out of the rain. Well, actually no. We don't have the tents anymore. The thief must have taken some things from the saddlebags before coercing the hermit into buying our horses. So, all in all, we're pretty lucky to have found this place. And that some rations were left. Anyway, let's try to get started on that stitching he wanted us to do. Well, it's one of the chores we agreed to. I know it's not hard for us, but the guy is missing some fingers. He doesn't really have the dexterity for it anymore. Think of it as helping out a disabled old man. Thanks to us, he won't have a bunch of little holes in his clothes anymore. You said the other traitor was an old man too, right? What was he like? I mean, by the time we get back, the first bounty posters will be ready. I'd like to refresh my memory so we know if they're accurate. He was tall and wore a mask. That's it? Well, compared to the other guy, it's not much. Even if he wore clothes and covered most of his features, I'd think you'd notice something. You really can't think of anything else about him? What did that guy even do in your crimes? Oh. So he usually split off to do some other objective they didn't tell you about. I guess I can't blame you for not knowing much if you didn't see him in action all that often. What makes you so certain they're part of the betrayal thing, then? Maybe that was just the young guy's idea. Oh, yeah. That does make it sound like the two of them planned it ahead of time. If there were only the three of you there, then... yeah. I'll, um... I'll stop bringing up bad memories for you. Let's focus on our work here. Convenient that you already know how to do this, by the way. And to fix your own clothes, I take it? Yeah, I guess with the medicine cost for your uncle and trying to pay your way out of debt, you'd have tried to save some money there. Me? Uh, Justino taught me to do it. He figured simple work like this might help me calm and focus my mind before all the lessons where he tried to teach me to invoke holy powers. Never did help all that much for the lessons, but hey... It's a small, practical skill that comes in handy. I go on a lot of solo quests, so there's not a lot of people around to do it for me if something gets torn. That's a bit of a change of subject, but okay. We will only have one horse for the trip back, but this is a war horse from the capital we're talking about. It should be strong enough to carry the both of us. Especially if some of our supplies were robbed. I wouldn't worry about it. Well, yes, maybe in theory it might tire the horse out a little faster. It's not like I've observed and studied that kind of thing. But even then, I don't think it will slow us down that much. Faster than going on foot, anyway. Now enough about that. Let's try to get as much of this stitching done as we can this evening, okay? When morning comes, I'd like to be able to just eat breakfast and go. Let's try to make it so we can cover a lot of ground tomorrow. I bet I can get more stitching done than you in an hour. 
Oh, it's on.